It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. To be in his house one more time. Amen. He woke us up this morning. He allowed us to see another day. You woke up in your right mind. Hallelujah. You got up this morning. You just don't understand how blessed you are. Some of you got up this morning. You got in your vehicle. You put gas in your car. You came to the house of God. Some of you got up out of your cozy beds this morning. Fitz breakfast. You just don't know how blessed you are. Hallelujah. Just look at somebody and tell them you're blessed. You just don't know how blessed you are. You're blessed. Ah, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's not about how smart you are. It doesn't matter about how much money you may have. It doesn't matter about your position or whose family you in. You are blessed because it's God's grace and mercy that had his hands on you and got his hand on you right now. Hallelujah. It was his grace and mercy while you are still here living, moving, breathing that his hand was upon you. I'm telling you, you got, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're here and you're still breathing, that's enough right there to give God some praise. That's enough right there to give God some praise. I thank God I'm still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might not, you might not have done everything that you wanted to do in life, but you need to be praising God that you're still living, that you're still breathing. You got one more day. I got one more day when I get up in the morning and I put my feet to the ground. I said, I got one more day, God. One more day to serve you. One more day to praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, before we go into the word, I feel that it's very important to touch a little bit about what's going on in season. We need to be aware of what is happening around us in the spirit. I want to talk a little bit about Israel. And I want y'all to understand what, what's going on in the spiritual realm and what's happening right now. And how it is important for us as God's people to be praying. It's important for us to be praying for Israel, to bless Israel. The Bible says that when we bless them, he will bless us. When we take up for Israel, when we support Israel, he will support us. Now, I know that everybody, there are some people in the land that have a different perspective, a different outlook of who God's chosen people is. But what I need y'all to understand what God spoke to me about this. Now, some of that is true. Some of it is not true. It's not based on color. It's not based on race. We are all God's children. Amen? No matter what anybody else said, you got people out here, they, they say otherwise, but they're a liar. And that is the spirit of error. Amen? We're all God's people. There are some people, you know, the, the Jews, the Hebrews, they're God's chosen people through bloodline. And then there are some that's been grafted in and adopted in and grafted in. So we're all God's children. But what I need y'all to understand is what the devil is trying to do, he's trying to uproot and obliterate the foundation of God. Now, what, what you need to understand what's happening is before Jesus comes, the Bible says that Israel has to have an acknowledgement of really truly who Jesus is. That he is king of kings and lord of lords. That Judaism has to cease in Israel. In Judaism, they believe that Jesus is not the son of God. They don't believe in the resurrection. So a Judaism has to cease in Israel. So what the enemy is trying to do is he's trying to destroy the location of God's people. He's trying to, he's trying to destroy the location 
and the foundation of God's people. And if he can obliterate God's people, then he can stop the confession. Okay, y'all need to understand what I'm talking about. If he could get rid of all of God's chosen people, then he could stop the confession of Israel saying that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that we believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Once you start seeing a multitude of Jewish people being converted over from Judaism into Christianity, I'm talking about a corporate movement. I'm not talking about just one or two people over here or one or two people over there. I'm talking about a movement. Once you start seeing a corporate movement in Israel, you better get your house in order. Stuff that you got in your life you need to clean up. Stuff in your house you need to get together. It's time to get our house in order because prophecy is fulfilling itself. We're seeing it unfolding right before our very eyes. You see? And that's what the enemy is trying to do. Trying to eradicate God's people. Now I know some people are saying, well, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. That's true. The gates of hell should not prevail against it. But what is our responsibility in the kingdom? We have to understand that We are fighting a defeated foe. The enemy is already defeated. When I pray, I pray like he defeated. When I lay hands, I lay hands like he defeated. Everything that I do. See, once you understand that you are fighting an enemy that has already been defeated, you understand the difference between battles and wars. Okay. Now, what is a war? A war is something that it is a war that goes on for a long period of time or a short period of time. But within that war, there's many battles. You have one war, but you have many battles. Okay? So what's happening is the war has already been won. The devil is already defeated. God is already ruling and reigning. He's already supreme. He's already defeated the enemy. But there are many battles that is in between the war. There are many battles that we have to fight as God's people. God didn't never say we didn't have to fight. He didn't say, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Amen. We pray, we fast, we seek God's word, we seek his counsel, but we need to understand that we still hold a responsibility to pray. Just because, just because the enemy is already defeated and just because that prophecy has already been pre, pre-ordained to happen, that doesn't take us out of the responsibility that we have as God's people, to pray. We have to pray because we are the ones that stand in in the, in the, in the balance. We are the salt of the earth. If we lose our saltiness, then who's going to preserve the earth? Who's going to preserve the earth if we lose it? If we lose our zeal, who's going to preserve the earth? So at this moment, I'm going to ask if everybody will stand up on their feet And I want you to grab somebody by the hand. I want you to touch somebody. Grab somebody by the hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Father God, we come in agreement right now. And first of all, we thank you for who you are and what you've been in our lives. We thank you for your love, your peace, your joy, your faithfulness. And we thank you, dear Lord, that we can come to you any time of the day or night with our petitions. Asking you, first of all, to forgive us. Forgive us for all our sins, our shortcomings, our weaknesses, and our flaws. 
And Lord, we come just to ask you right now to have mercy on Israel. Have mercy on the people. Have mercy on the military. Have mercy on the leader, Benjamin Netanyahu. Lord, we speak peace right now. We speak love right now. Because we know, dear Lord, the strongest spirit is love. And we speak love right now for each individual over here in America and in Israel. We thank you for the opportunity to to stand in the gap for those that are less fortunate than we are. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for you've been better to us than we can ever be to ourselves. We thank you, Lord, that we realize if we go across the water, dear Lord, we don't realize how blessed we are. But we lean on you now because we want blessings for our brothers and sisters across the side, on the other side. We pray, dear Lord, that your will be done. We pray that justice be served. We pray for the peace, the joy that only you can give. Well, you said, dear Lord, that the joy, the peace that you give is not as the world gives but like you give. Even in the midst of the storms, they're in a war now that they're saying that it's almost as bad as a Holocaust. But Lord, you know. You said for we to ask. You said that we could stand in the gap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're standing in the gap right now. We believe in for your mercy. Because mercy fills the case. We believe in for your grace. We believe in for your righteousness. We believe in for your peace. We believe in for your welfare. So Lord, we as we ask, we know that you you hear our prayer, prayers. We know that you have answered our prayers. By faith, we believe it's already done. We believe we have the victory right now. We believe that you're working in our behalf right now. And Lord, we're going to continue to believe. Continue to hold your people up. These are your people. These are the people that you are a part of. An enemy don't like you and they don't like your people. But we stand against the enemy right now. We're standing against the enemy with the weapons that you have given us. The word. The name. The spirit. We stand with the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal but mighty through God to pulling down strongholds. Tearing down principalities and powers. And so we stand against the enemy right now. Satan, it gives us pleasure to tell you to get under our feet. Because we have authority over you. You are a loser. Thank you, Lord. 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 We thank you. We just thank you. We can't thank you enough. We give you praise and we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When we touch and agree and we all believe the same thing and we're praying for the same thing, God, we're here. Amen. 
He said, what two, what two shall touch and agree on anything whatsoever we pray and we ask for in Jesus' name, it shall be done. It's, it's very important that we understand what's happening because we need to understand that once you start seeing holy wars, I'm not talking about wars uh, pertaining to goods of buying and selling, wars of politics, but once you start seeing wars of people just bombing people and killing people just because you don't like them, just because you don't like them or you, or you don't like their, their, their ethnic background or you don't like the religion that they're in, that's, that's a holy war. That's a holy war. Once you start seeing these things, time is really winding up. Time is winding up. Okay? And we, we, we got to be aware, church, what's going on. I know, I know a lot of times we say, well, things like this have happened before. But you need to understand what the word of God says about signs and wonders. See, now we're seeing things, they're cramming together. It's, it's not being, prophecy now is not, it's, like, it's not like, you know, you see a fulfillment of prophecy one year and then Three years later, you see another fulfillment of prophecy. Now you're seeing all of it coming together. You're seeing it come together as a whole. And that lets you know that time is winding out. Now, what's going to begin to happen next? Now, the Lord been really speaking to me about discernment, about how we need to be seeking for the gift of discernment. Discernment is the same as insight. When you're able to see beyond what is before you, okay? You have one type of, the, you have a definition of discernment, which means judgment, the ability to judge well. That is the world or carnal definition of discernment. But then the Christian definition of discernment is perception in the absence of judgment with a view to obtaining spiritual guidance and understanding. This is, this is when you're intuitive. When a person is intuitive, they might not have all the facts together, but in their spirit, in their spirit, they're able to make wise decisions, they're able to judge well, and it will keep them, and they're able to, and discretion will also keep them as well. See, when you have discernment and you have insight, can't nobody come to you and fool you and trick you. See, we're living in a time now where there are so many people that they are wolves in sheep clothing. And you have to be very aware well, because, see, there's different types of discernment. You have discernment in the Bible where it talks about where you have discernment so you can know the difference between good and evil to make a right judgment. Then you have discernment of the Bible to where you, need, uh, the way you know the will of God. What is the will of God when you are transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can test? You have discernment in the Bible where it says believe not every spirit because every spirit is not from God. Amen. Okay. Then you also have discernment of spirits where the Bible says who's know, who knows the spirit of, uh, the spirit of God is, except you have to discern the spirit by the spirit of God. The spirit of man cannot discern the spirit of, of God. But the spirit of God, we have the spirit. We can discern the, the things of the spirit, and we can discern the things of the flesh. Okay? So there are different types of discernment. But the discernment that I want to talk to you about tonight is the discernment of the hearts of men. The discernment of the hearts of men. Because what's going to begin to happen, you're going to see people coming out of the woodworks. You're going to see people coming out of the woodworks in your life. You're going to see people coming out of woodworks in the government. 
You're going to see people coming out of the woodworks all over the place. You ain't going to know where they come from. You ain't going to know what their motive is. But you need to have a discernment so that way you can be kept. You can be kept. I'm going to tell you right now, when the end of Christ come, you ain't going to know where it come from. He just going to come out of the blue. Everybody have this idea of where the Antichrist is going to come from. But you really don't know. You really don't know where the Antichrist comes from. Everybody have an idea, but you really don't know. Okay? It's going to be someone that just come out all of a sudden. And what's going to happen is when they come out, they're going to be seeing some good stuff. Look at somebody and say, you got to be aware of somebody saying good stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I want you to understand, before you can take on, before you can level up and take on things on a national level, you must first practice on a local level. Now, what, what does this mean? This means that people, they try to operate on a national level, but they're not handling things on a local level. I can't discern the spirit that's going up in the White House if I can't discern the spirits in my house. You understand? I can't, listen, I want you to, uh, now, I believe in missions. I believe it fully. I believe we're supposed to do missions. I, I believe that. But one thing that I can't agree on is I can't agree on feeding somebody that's, that's uh, thousands of miles away, but you can't feed your own family. I can't agree on feeding someone thousands of miles away, but then you got a homeless, you got some homeless people in your backyard that ain't nobody trying to see about, ain't nobody trying to love on, ain't nobody trying to help. It's, it's good that you want to do mission. It's good that you want to go, you know, level up, you know, on a national scale or international. It's, it's all good. But if you can't take, take care of things locally, God can't take you to the next level. Now, I know some people might say, well, Pastor, I don't believe that. I, I just believe that God just, wherever he wants to send you, wherever he wants to do, he's going to do it. Well, I need you to understand what the Bible says about that. Well, the Bible says that if a man can't take care of his house, how he going to take care of the church? So the ways of God, the ways of God is you need to do a little bit now so I can advance you. See, we don't understand the ways of God. See, sometimes we look at, we think, well, we say, well, yeah, God can do anything he want to do when he want to do it. Yeah, he can. But we serve a God that he operates decently and in order. And everything that he does and every, and every which way that he operates, he operates according to his word. Amen. So when the Bible says that he can't make you Lord over much, if you can't take care of little. See, we have this idea that God can just take you. Oh, God just going to take me on a national level, international. He ain't going to do that if he ain't seen you doing nothing at home. You can fast. You can pray. You can, man, you can pray for 100 days nonstop. And not do anything what you're supposed to do on a local scale and expect God to take you on a national scale, you're going to be waiting all day. So that's why it's very important that when we start off with discernment, we need to start off with, okay, Lord, show me how to discern people that are around me. Because, see, if you can show me how to discern people around me and, and, and help me with discern people around me, once I get that down pat, then you can take me farther to a national level. Now you can show me things, what's going on on a national scale, on an international scale, okay? That's why the Bible says that in the, you got to desire the sincere, meat of the, the sincere milk of the word first because you got to drink milk before you can chew meat. You got some people want meat, but they ain't never had no milk. You can't chew on all that hard meat. 
You can't chew on that meat and you ain't designed the, sin the sincere milk of the word. Amen. The foundation of the word. Amen. So with that said, I want you to turn your Bibles real quickly. While you're looking up in your Bibles, I, I want you to be aware of, you know, people, they're going to come to you. They're going to say some good stuff. They're going to butter you up like a butterball biscuit. They will. They will butter you up. They will tell you how nice you are. They will tell you how good you look. They will, listen, they will brag on your children. Yes, they will. They will do all those things, but deep down in their heart, they have an ulterior motive. You need to be able to see beyond the flattering words. See, if you can't graduate from this, you can't graduate from somebody scamming you. Now, I'm going to tell you what's happening, too. I have never seen in my life so many Christian people getting scammed. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. It's so many Christian people, it's so many believers that's being scammed right now. You got to be careful. They're being scammed through Facebook, through Instagram. They're being scammed, even people calling their phone. Listen, don't, don't, be get, don't get caught up into all this stuff. Well, you got to send this amount of money to get this amount of money. You Listen, if God want to bless you. Now, I need you to understand, if God want to bless you, the blessings of God make it the rich and add no sorrow in it. If you think you done got blessed, but you can't even sleep, you can't even eat, and you worry, then you need to know that that didn't come from God. Okay? That didn't come from God. If it creates worry, if it creates confusion, if it creates disappointment, that didn't come from God. That's something that you wanted. You put yourself in that predicament. It's not necessarily a blessing. It's something you did. Amen? But we have to be aware of these things. They're going to come to you. They're going to say this and that and the other, but it's really a plot to trick you, to scam you, to deceive you. So let's see what, the, what it says here in the Bible here, uh, how Jesus handled these things. John chapter 2, verse 23. It says, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name. When they saw the signs, he did. Many believed in his name when they saw the signs, which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and all had and, and had no need that anyone should testify of man for he knew what was in man. Now in this scripture in verses 23 to, through 25, I need y'all to see how Jesus carried himself. I need you to understand that I'm not trying to tell you to be antisocial. I'm not telling you to be stuck up. I'm not telling you to be non-friendly. The Bible says that he who has many friends must show himself friendly. Okay? That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying it's a certain way you need to carry yourself around people. You just don't give your heart. What it look like me take my heart out my chest? And give it to somebody I don't know. What if I were to just take it out, give it to somebody I don't know, and tell you to keep it, tend to it, make sure I'm still living? You don't even know that person. We have a tendency as Christians, we allow people to just butter us up. Somebody can come to you. The first thing they got to do is mention God and they got you. The first thing they do, and see, and they know how to do it, too. Listen, y'all, me being a pastor, I have experienced so much, y'all, from insurance companies to when we need things done at the church, 
when we need th things done at the TLC building, the gym, all kind of experiences and situations that I've been involved in with people because, see, they want, my, they want our business. They want our business. So when they come to you, when they meet me at the church, the first thing they're they going to do, they're going to try to engage with me in some kind of Christian talk. But see, right now, when we're doing business, I don't need no Christian talk right now. Because the Christian talk, y'all looking at me. I learned something. You know, even, 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 as a, even as a little boy, I would watch my dad. And I would observe him. And even sometimes I would say, dog, I think my dad could have been a little bit nicer. As a child. But now I'm in this position, I understand. Business mean business. Ain't no church business either. Business is business. So what happened is people there, anything, if somebody find out that you're a Christian, that you say, even if you call somebody, you say, I need some new windows in my house. That, that the person that you call, if they find out you say, let them find out. They're going to go home and do some research. Y'all don't want to hit me. Y'all looking at me. They're going to go home and do some research. They're going to find out some key scriptures that y'all can identify each other about. And they're going to bring it to you. Uh huh. They might even come to you and say, you know what? I've had people. I've had people come to me, meet me here over at the TLC to do some work. And they asked me, I need you to pray for me. You didn't come for prayer. You came to look at this floor. You understand? You didn't come here for prayer. You came here to look at this floor, but you want me to pray for you before you tell me how much the bill is. Now, when you see how Jesus, how he acted, see, the Bible, Jesus knew all men. Jesus knew all men. He knew the hearts of men. He could discern the hearts of men. So now what you see in operating in, in Jesus now, you see in the gift of discernment of spirits. The gift of discernment of spirits is operating within, within Jesus. He knows what's in man because, see, they didn't believe him at first until they saw the works he did. Then when they saw the works he did, that's just like somebody don't want to give you no time until they find out what you got. Y'all don't want to hear me. Y'all looking at me straight. They ain't give you a time of day. Until they find out what you got. They didn't give you a time of day till they find out who you really are. That's how people operate. That's how man, that's what's in man. If you ever want to know what's in man, look, this is why I always tell people all the time. When people come to me and talk to me about uh, business ventures that they got going on, uh, uh, things that they want to start, things that God, ideas that God has blessed them with. First thing I do is I tell them, I say, listen, now if, you, if you're looking for support, support not going to come right now. They look at me strange. What you mean? My church family and my, my regular family and all that. I tell you, listen, I know what I'm talking about. Support not going to come when you first start out. Support never come when you first start out. Once people start seeing the evidence. <laughs> once people start seeing the evidence of your progression, that's when the support comes. Men are moved by what they see because they don't believe nothing. That's why the Bible tells us when you want to operate in faith, you don't operate by sight. Because that's how men operate. Men operate by sight. But the Bible says that the just shall what? Shall live by faith. And we do what? We walk by faith and what? And not by what? Sight. 
I walk by what I believe, not by what I see. So a lot of time when you're looking for support, you're not going to find it because they ain't seen nothing yet. Uh-huh. But they didn't have no support with Jesus until they saw something. Till they saw him raised in the dead. Till they saw him uh, 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 open up blind eyes. Till they saw him casting out demons. The Bible said then they believed on his name. They didn't believe earlier. They, believed, they didn't believe the prophets. They didn't believe he say, she say. I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure that they probably heard of him doing some things earlier. But they still didn't believe it. Till they saw it for themselves. Then they believed. But the, Jesus, knowing what was in their heart, the Bible said that he did not commit himself over to them. You know what? You know what that means. He didn't commit himself. Come here, babe. Come here. Just say if you're having a conversation with somebody, you come up on somebody, you don't really know who they are, but you feel something in your spirit. You can't quite identify it. You can't put your name, you can't put your finger on it, but God is using you. You are intuitive. You don't have the facts about that person. You don't know that, per that person, but there's, there's something about that person. Something that you can't quite put your finger on. You have a discernment of spirits. Have you ever went home and said, well, maybe it's just me? No, it ain't just you. I'm sorry. If you had a situation with somebody and you're a believer and you go home and you feel some kind of way, it ain't just you. It is the spirit of God in you that was able to discern what was behind that person's lip service. You're able to see beyond their goodie bags. Amen? But you know what we do. First time somebody say, God. We be all up in their face. You all up in their face, all up in their face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you're telling them about your children. Where you live at? Well, I stay such and such, such. You don't tell that person where you stay just because they talking about God. No, you don't even carry on a conversation that is not. See, you, you have to understand because look, we was up on a little situation. I'm very transparent. I'm very transparent, and and I'm just gonna be real with y'all, babe. Thank you. Now I've been studying this all week, and I didn't know that that this was going to happen. You know, we had a food truck last, last uh, Saturday. And it was reported to me, and I'm very transparent, and you know, I'm not, we're not, we don't have nothing to hide. It was reported to me that the truck driver that delivered the food had came, and he did not drop the food off and leave. But he dropped the food and he stayed. He stayed and helped. Look at somebody say he wasn't supposed to do that. No, you got a job. You a truck driver. You're not a volunteer. You are a truck driver. You deliver food. If we needed volunteers, we would have asked for you to help us volunteer. But he took it upon himself to do so. Okay? So the whole time he helping, he got his ears open. We just talking, we talking and stuff like that. So he hears somebody say, we're going to set, set this over to the side. Now, he going to go back and tell his superior, like we were trying to do something undermining. Like we were trying to set something to the side for somebody to do something on, uh, to the side. And, that, and that's not even what the case may be. When you're doing a food truck, you're setting things to the side. You're organizing. You're doing all this stuff. You, you're putting things in boxes and things like that. See, he had an arterial motive. The whole time he was bragging on us. That's what they told me. It was reported to me that he was bragging on it. He said, I've never seen a church such organized when handing this food out. I've never seen people just so organized and all that and was talking about the Lord. And I heard that just folk were saying, yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Just all that. Letting him come in. No, let him drop his food off and go. 
See, what happens is because you, you think somebody godly. And you think somebody give you a little praise, a little compliment, then now you can get loose. Look at somebody and say, all they trying to do is get you loose. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. See, you got to understand, that's what they were trying to do with Jesus. They were trying to get Jesus loose. So that way he would loosen up and commit himself over to him. So he'll start spilling the beans about everything. Even stuff that they weren't even supposed to know. Don't y'all know that there were some things that Jesus wanted folk to know and there were some things that he didn't want them to know? On the Mount of Transfiguration, he told James, John, and Peter, don't tell the other ones what you saw. Right? He was at times, Jesus could get loose, but then at a lot of times, he was stiff. What does stiff mean? Stiff means that you are discreet. You have discretion. You have tact. You are careful with your words. You are careful with your actions. You have discernment. You are discerning. You, you're, you're, you're not being stuck up. You're not being some kind of way or, or, or acting brand new, but you observe it. You are discerning through the spirit of God, not your spirit, not, not, not your heart, not the way you feel in your mind, carnally, but you're operating strictly through the spirit of God. Amen? That's how Jesus was. Where well, he said, I could not commit myself over to him. That's how we supposed to be. We supposed to be the same way. Because a lot of times people have arterial motive. Even when they know who you are. They might know who you are. They might know that you, 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 you are upstanding or whatever. But they still have arterial motive. He didn't need nobody. See, when you're operating by the Spirit of God, let, let, let me explain something to you. I don't need nobody to come tell me nothing about nobody else. Yeah. Don't do it. Because what you need to understand is, when you are people of God, and you want to operate by the Spirit of God, you don't want anything to take away from the practice of stirring up the gift. Now, the Bible told us to stir up the gift, because if you don't stir it up, you'll lose it. Stir up the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So anytime people come to you trying to tell you something about somebody else, guess what's happening? You are deluding what God want to show you. That's why a lot of time when people would try to go to my daddy and try to tell him something, sometimes, I remember one time somebody told me, said, I was trying to tell your daddy something. He put his hands, on, his hands over his ear. <laughs> I, I didn't believe him because that's not like something a child would do. But they said that's what he did. Say they were trying to tell him something. And you know what he said. He told that person, he said, let God show me. Let God tell me. See, when you're operating by the Spirit, you don't get excited about gossip. And then turn around talking about something God didn't show you something. God ain't showed you nothing. You heard that through the grapevine. And what happens is there are a lot of people operating like this. There are a lot of prophets operating like this. They'll hear something through the grapevine or they'll do research and then they'll go back to the people of God and try to give, bring forth a prophecy of something they heard. Not of something that God told you. What did, Jesus, what, did, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, if I want to make, make anything known to my prophet, he said, I will make it known through what? Visions and dreams. Every, listen, every prophet beside Moses. Moses was the only prophet in the Bible that had a relationship that was different than all of the other prophets. 
You can say, well, look, I don't believe that, Pastor. Well, how you don't believe it when Jesus said, when God said it out of his mouth? You, you, listen, you, you got to hear what God is saying. God said, there was no prophet like unto Moses. God said it to Aaron and Miriam. He said, there is no, he said, now, well, now, he said, now, what make you think you can talk about him like that? And I'm saying in the 2023, I'm paraphrasing. Now, what makes you think you could come against him like that? What's wrong with you? Why? He ain't just anybody. He ain't just anybody. He said, other prophets, I speak through through visions and dreams. But him, we talk face to face. We have conversation. We have conversation. I, we talks like that. I share with him stuff that I don't share to other prophets. Right? So what makes you think you could come against him like that? Right? That's what he said. So every other prophet that is beside Moses, when you're trying to hear from God, God will show you things through visions and dreams, and I want to say also within your spirit. Because there have been things that I knew, but I didn't know I knew. I remember a few Sundays ago, I told you, I said, I said, pay attention to Israel. Did I not? I didn't know what I was seeing. I didn't know. I didn't have no facts. I didn't hear nothing on the news. I didn't read no paper. All I know is when I was standing up here, the Spirit of God in me said, to tell the people to pay attention to Israel. I didn't know this was going to happen. All I was, I was just obedient. So when you operating by the spirit of God, when you are intuitive, when you have a discernment of spirit, when you're operating in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, you ain't going to have all the facts because it's spiritually, it's spiritual. Why? Because the wisdom of God the wisdom of God is greater than the wisdom of man. And the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. So have you ever been in a situation where you say, look, I don't know how I know. Have you ever been, have you ever dealt with your kid? Uh-huh. Now that hit you right there, didn't you? Now you're like, yeah, Pastor, now I understand what you're talking about. And your kid, you come to your kid, you tell your kids, listen, I don't know how I know, but I know. I know. And you know how you know? You say, why? Because you came from me. And I was the same way. And if I was like that, I know my child. Uh-huh. You don't know all the facts, but you know you. And you know that child came from you. I tell parents that all the time. Folk be trying to tell all day like, when it, when I deal with parents and their kids. Parents be bringing me, uh, bringing the kid to me sometime, and I look at her. I just don't know what's wrong with him. And I look at her and I look at him. <laughs> I look at her and I look at her daughter. I look at her and I look at her daughter. You don't know where that came from. You mean to tell me after all this time you never knew? Don't you know you see the reflection of yourself? Now, you might have got saved and all that. That's all good, but you ain't always been saved. That is, what you looking at is yourself before you got saved. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at yourself, B.C., before Christ. Now, whatever you want to do with that later, you do what you need to do with that. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 6 through 8. Now, first thing I need y'all to understand is you can take scripture and disperse scripture through different situations in life. 
I understand that. I get that. But when you teach scripture one way and you don't share with the people what what was what was God point what was his point okay instead of just taking the scripture and trying to use it in a way to excite the people a lot of times people take scripture to excite the people but that was not God's point that was not the point that he was trying to make okay so what happens is when we when we trying to make a point like a lot of mot uh, motivational speakers use this. They say, it's, uh, it's, uh, the way a man thinketh, so is he. So as a man thinketh, so is he. A lot of motivational speakers, they use this to, to entertain, to motivate you, to boost you up, to edify you, to get you to understand that there's a certain way you need to think about yourself in your mind. Because if you think that way, then you'll begin to operate that way. So they use that. But get look at somebody and say, that was not God's point. That wasn't his point. Motivational speakers use this because they know the power of the mind. And they try to use the scripture to line it up with the people and your situation that you're going through. You may be going through something. You may be dealing with some, something about yourself or, or, or situation with business or, or friends or it's something that you, you want to change and they'll tell you, so a man think it, so is he. You got to be careful about how you think about yourself. And I've heard about some of them that say, they will be preaching and say, it's not about what people think about you. It's about what you think about you. That wasn't God's point. First of all, you got to look at the beginning of the passage of scriptures. The beginning of the passage of scripture will show you God's point. The reason why, the way you're supposed to use the scripture a certain way. He says, do not eat the food of a begrudging host. Verse 6. In the NIV, or the New King James Version, it says, do not eat the delicacies or the, the food of a miser. What is a miser? M-I-S-E-R. A miser. Yes, miser. A miser is a person who has a lot of money, but they hoard it. They gather, they gather, they gather, they hoard it. Uh, a miser is a person who might have a million dollars in the bank. A million dollars in the bank. But cry over 25 cents. Cry over 25 cents. Won't even give nobody a dollar. Won't give to the poor. Or nothing, won't do anything. They just hoard it. And they hide it in places. A miser is a person, when you go to their house, see, they don't even want you coming in. Because they, they don't want you coming in. You say, uh, 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 can I go to the bathroom? They say, wait a minute. <laughs> you hear them rambling. You know what they're doing. They're trying to take their money out of that medicine box. And that medicine, that medicine, uh, uh, <laughs> pill bottle they got. They got money hitting in the medicine pill bottle, medicine cat. They got money in the cookie jar. They got money up on the floorboard. Money in the bank. Money at the credit union. <laughs> but, you, but you ask them, but, but if a child go up to them and ask them, hello sir, can I have 25 cents because I want to get a piece of bubble gum. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. You got money everywhere. That's a miser. So the first thing he's saying, do not eat the food of a miser. Or a begrudging host. Same thing. Do not crave his delicacies. Verse 7. For he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cause. 
in the New King James Version, it says that, for so as a man thinketh, so is he. In verse 7. But it means the same thing. The NIV is a translation from the King James so that way you can better understand it. So you have to be aware of people who say something and you think they mean it, but they really don't. A lot of people say good stuff because other people watching. A lot of times people have a different attitude because some people watching. And they want to make themselves look like something. But they really not for you. So what, so what God, so what here God is trying to show us in this scripture, he's saying, don't, don't, listen, if you feel something in your spirit, somebody, even, I'm going to tell you something, somebody can even invite you somewhere, and you feel in your spirit that it's not genuine, don't go. I don't care if they say, uh, 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 yeah, we invited you, come on. And, and, and they say, yeah, we love you, and we ain't got together in a while. But then something in your spirit saying, mm, wait a minute. Something ain't right about this. This don't feel genuine. This don't feel real. Just so, and you can't, and, and, and you ain't had no argument with them. You ain't had no discord. You ain't had no disagreement. None of that. Ain't nothing happened. But in your spirit, you feel, you want me to come, but I don't really feel welcome. See, the Lord is trying to show us how to have discretion, how to hold back some. You got to hold back from people because guess what? They're going to hold it over your head later. They hold it over your head. You remember when? You remember when? You remember I took you to that, that restaurant and, and, and I bought you that $100 lobster? <laughs> Everywhere you go, let me tell y'all something. You got to be careful, y'all, because this is the enemy trying to destroy your peace, trying to hold you in bondage. The enemy loves to bond people and bind people. That's why God is trying to get us unbinded. That's why when it talks about over in the book of Ecclesiastes, it said before you pass away, make sure you didn't pay all your bills. It talks about a person that if you transitioning, you make sure that you have no debt that's out there to be left and put pressure on somebody else. See, it says that over in the book of Ecclesiastes. It tells us to pay those whom you owe. Why? Because you will be always indebted to them. It's the same way with this. When you eat the food of a, of a miser or someone that is like that, they say, they say eat and drink. Come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. But in their heart, they're really saying, please don't sit down. Y'all don't want to hear me. People can say, come in. Have a seat. Eat and drink. In their mind, they saying. Oh, I hope they say I'm too busy. I hope they say I got somewhere else to go. <laughs> I want to be hospitable. <laughs> but inside, I really want you to go home. Yeah, I got food that you can eat, but I really want to take that to lunch tomorrow. I really didn't want to give that to you. I want to take that to lunch. But see, they'll say it, but in the heart. The heart is not with you. All these things were for our benefit. Even Jesus said it. Jesus said, he said, you worship me with your lips. God said, you worship me with your lips, but your heart is not with me. Your heart is far away from me. And that's how people do. They butter you up with their lips, but their heart is not with you. You have to have discernment to be able to look beyond that. So that way, when you eat, if you sit up there and you eat, they, somebody say, well, come to my house and and uh, uh, I'm going to uh, invite you over for dinner. And you go there, and you make sure you were real hungry when you went there. <laughs> and they were real nice. They were real nice. 
You come through and say, they got the food laid out. They could invite you over for Thanksgiving. You, they say, somebody say, well, I want to invite my friend over to Thanksgiving. And they say, yeah, come on, come on. Grandma say, yeah, tell them come on. Auntie say, yeah, tell them come on. But inside, they were like, oh, Lord, another mouth to feed. I don't even know we're going to have enough food. Y'all know we got folk in here that always want to bring canned drink. They'll never bring no real food. That's going on on the inside of that person. But on the outside of that person, yeah, sure, bring them on. Bring them on. And then when they get there, you know, you know, that, you know that cousin you got. In every family, in every family, you got that cousin or two. You know they burnt one before they came. You already know. You, are <laughs> you got that one person at Thanksgiving dinner. When they walk in, you think, you think Jamaica then came up in there. <laughs> and you know it. You know. You already know when they walk in. Oh, you know they hungry. And, and the grandma already feels, she already like, you know, that's another mouth. But then she's saying, come on, baby, come on in here. And then you say, well, this is not my house. Somebody going to fit my place. No, you at our house. When you at our house, you at home. You at home. Be at home. You, you, uh, you ain't going to fit my place. No, you see, it? you see it over there. That's how grandmamas act. Some of them. Then you go over there, and you don't get the little circle plate. <laughs> I'm trying to show you some real stuff. I know it's funny. I know it's funny. And I know some people right now that's tuning in, they might be saying, well, Lord, I want to hear something deeper. But guess what? If, if it's in word, it, 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 it must be beneficial to me if God trying to show me how I'm supposed to act around people who heart not with me. It, it must be important for me to know who around me so I won't get caught up in no trap. You done went over there, you didn't even get, you got the sectional plate. Yeah, you ain't even want the circle, yeah, the tray. You ain't want the circle plate. You had an option. They got the circle plate there, then they got the tray plate there with all the sections in there. That's that, that, that's that rectangle plate. That's the plate I used to like to use. And you going through that line, boy, and the, and the family look. And see, you a guest, so they let you go first. All the children and the guests come first. And folk looking at you. And I know they ain't finna let this joker go first. Now, you know that joker didn't come up in here smelling just like that loud. And y'all gonna let him go first. And he going first, I'm talking about he get a breast, a thigh, a breast, a leg, a thigh, a wing. I said, Lord, are you going to get the whole body? You done got the breast, the leg, the thigh, the wing. You taking the whole body, the whole, ch the whole chicken. And people looking at you. Why? Because they heart not with you. They heart really not with you. They looking at you the whole time. They're saying you're welcome. They're saying come and eat. You've been invited. But then the whole time they're saying, Lord, have mercy. What I done got myself into. That's kind of how the restaurants used to treat me when they seen us coming. Y'all know the clumps. Remember when they were going in, the, in, the, in there? They was on their way to the restaurant. They were walking in. Well, that's how the Vahe family used to look. We used to walk up in there. They used to have a theme song for us. Doom, doom, doom. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. We going and go to Corral. They got a theme song. Do do do. Everybody, hurry up. Code Red. Code Red. The Vahe's coming. Code Red. We got some chicken drop. 
I got to leave have about 50 pieces of chicken just for Pastor Frederick. The whole time they resenting you. Then when they leave, when the Thanksgiving dinner over, and they leave, they talk about you like a dog. And you know what they'll say? Because you didn't come up in there hungry like you ain't got no home training. Eating up all the food for somebody who don't like to give nobody nothing. They're going to say, them folk act like they ain't never ate nothing in their life. I wonder if they even getting even any food at home. That's how they do, church. Because their heart wasn't with you in the first place. So guess what? In order for you, you got to guard your heart through discretion. You have to guard your heart through discernment. Because now you can find yourself in a situation where you are being resented and you can feel the resentment and you ain't even, you're not even having a good time because you know that the people really don't want you there. This is why, and I'm going to say this and we're going we to we gonna close. This is why I don't agree with accepting every engagement to a church. I don't accept every engagement. I don't run. We run places too much. All over the place. You'll be running, going all over the place. Let me tell you something. Just because, do you, do you think because you go to every revival, every time the doors open, that, that don't make you a spiritual giant? There may be a hunger in you, but when you go places, you have to pray. Don't just, listen, I'm going to tell y'all something. I learned this a long time ago. Everything is not a God thing. There are good things and there are God things. You can't look at a good thing and think that it's a God thing. It may be a good thing, but it may not be a God thing. Right? So you got to pray. Because there have been many times we have been places. Choir, praise team, wherever. We've been places. And you don't go to a place and people just sit down on you. And don't welcome you. And don't make you feel welcome. A lot of times people will invite you to come just so nobody else can say something they say, why y'all didn't invite CWA? People operate like that. People will invite, people will have you come. They'll even individually, they'll have you come just so that like, somebody else can't say, well, they invited everybody else, why you didn't invite them? It's not so much they really want you to be there. They doing it for show. Sure. A lot of time. Not all of them. Not all of them. And not, and not the place that we're going to today either. The place that we're going to today, we always going to go with them because they always come and support us and we support them. But then there are some places out there, they'll just have you because there's an ulterior motive. They really don't want that word. They really don't want to hear the truth. There's an ulterior motive, and you have to have a discernment because a lot of times we have been invited places, and people will invite us because they know that when they get ready to take up the tithes and the offering, they're going to have a good offering that day. They don't necessarily want the word. They just want the offering. So you got to pray, and you have to ask God, okay, Lord, do you want me to go? Does that make you a person where you're trying to, you know, be a respective person? No, you're not trying to be a respective person. You just want to know, Lord, is this in your will for me to go? Because you can go somewhere and then you don't feel welcome. And then when you go there and then you go home, it takes you a week to get over there. 
You got a week of disappointment, a week where you're thinking about that thing, a whole week even when you're trying to pray, even because you can't get over that feeling because that feeling was real and you know what you felt. And you know what? A lot of time, you really can't blame nobody but you. Because you could have taken yourself out of that. But you chose to go wing. And I know sometimes you're looking at it, you say, well, Lord, I want to do the right thing. That's good. That's good. But we're living in a time now to where there's so much fakery. Things are not the way they used to be, church. Social media, you can fake your life through social media. You can fake your life through the telephone. And we got TV. You can fake your life through the TV. Nowadays, there are a lot of people that's not genuine. So you got to walk around and you got to be a certain way because there's just so much fakery now. Nobody is real. You don't even know... You don't even know the people that you're engaging with now because there's so much fakery. Amen? Let us stand up on our feet. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord God. We ask, oh, Father God, for, your, for your, your knowledge and your understanding, your wisdom, oh, Father God, and how to deal with people, oh, Father. Because you want to advance us. You want to grow your, your body. You want, you, want, you want us to grow spiritually. You, you want a spiritual growth, oh, Father God, to take place in our life. You want to advance us. You want to do a corporal advancement, but the Lord is telling me that there are a few people that's, that he's trying to advance. He's trying to advance you. There's a few people even in the building right now. The Lord says he's trying to level you up. He wants you to go to another level. He says, but I'm trying to get you to take care of the small things first. And there's somebody in here, you feel that your life has been bombarded. You're taking on responsibilities that somebody else is supposed to be taking on. And God said the reason why I allowed you to take on these responsibilities is because I'm trying to prepare you for something. And he says that if you can't deal with this in your home, mm, how can I take you on another level? How can I bless you with the business? And the reason why I'm saying this, the Lord says that this responsibility that, is, that has been dropped in your lap is, is, is for you because he says, I got to, you have to go through practice in order for me to advance you. I need to see that you are faithful over the little things. Before I can make you Lord over much. There's two people in the house. For that word. There's a corporate. Leveling up that God's want. That God want to do. And God is saying right now. He's saying what I'm going to begin to do. And what I'm even doing now. Is I'm getting ready to bring forth error. That has been taught for many years. God is saying, I'm going to be bringing up error. He says, you're going to hear it everywhere. You're going to turn on the t TV. Even televangelists are going to start talking about it. Different teachings that's been taught that have not been taught the correct way in error. God said, I'm going to bring all this stuff to light. I'm going to bring it to light. He said, because I'm trying to grow my people and advance them into a whole nother level. Because the, because when you go to a new, a new level, there's a new devil. And you got to be prepared with what comes with the territory. We thank you today, Lord. We ask, Lord God, that you will forgive us of our sins. If we've sinned against you in any way, form, or fashion, we ask for forgiveness right now. Let your hand of protection be upon us and cover us in your blood, O oh Father. 
as we receive our tithes and offering, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will, uh, that you will see it, O oh, Father God, and that you will return it back to us. As your word have said, you are so faithful in doing so. For this we thank you. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen, amen.